got so much to do. Tell them that you do. Hello, nomads, party people, and strangers everywhere across the internet. My name is V, and today for a Valentine's related video, I've kind of been doing this thing off and on since 2015, where I would take one time out of the year to give you guys a little bit of some stuff because sex ed from where I'm standing does nothing for anybody. It is quite frankly appalling what the educational system does for children. First time we talked about this was about the ins and outs of sex. First step is intimacy. Yay. Oh, okay. Second time, we were talking about the ins and outs from a different side from how the parents in the whole equation are with the whole sexual nature of things. Where they try to have them see everything without any border um, borders or any close off things involving what's going on. And this year is no different from the weird shit upon weird shit where today we are going to be discussing fetishes. But not any kind of fetishes. The fetishes that no one really wants to talk about as like a warning sign for, is this what you want in a relationship? Holy shit! Now, if you guys see me going off to the screen looking at my left, which would be your right from where my hand is pointing, I'm going to be going over a list of five different fetishes, or at least five, it's kind of scarring to see what people are into, that for my own personal opinion, I don't feel like are part of a healthy relationship because they kind of borderline on weird and quite frankly horrifying. Alrighty then. Now let us begin with the first one of Anthropophagolaginia. What? I can't believe I can't pronounce that, so I'm just going to put it in the description below about all the list of the fetishes. Where this fetish is the fetish of raping and then cannibalizing another person. Okay, let's break this fetish down for a lot of individuals that can't really comprehend this notion. You're with a person, you're having a fun time, and you're about to have sex. And as soon as you're having sex, you just all kinds of like, okay, I've had enough. And then your partner sexually assaults you and you're just like, no. And when they're done, they then just start eating you. Like they either try, try to murder you and start eating you or just try to eat you right then and there. I don't know what the scenario is. So tell me on a scale of, a scale of one to 10, how sexy is that for you all? Cause I honestly want to know for whoever is out there finds that appealing. <laughs> Personally, for me, I find that a negative 9 million out of 10, but then again, I have standards for different reasons. Still, though, that's just me. Some people out there apparently get off on raping and then eating people. I don't know. What? I just don't know. This next one, I think we've all, I think we all know after I say what it is, of caprophilia. If you guys don't know what caprophilia is, think two girls, one cup. Oh! Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! Oh, what is wrong with you? Oh my god! <laughs> it's a fetish about feces, about turds, about all that disgustingness. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is basically what that is. And that's just kind of a blatant one, because we already had an over-the-top one, so I was like, let me go to something that's a little bit more blatant in weirdness. Now, I know a lot of people that apparently have that whole scat fetish. I'm not going to judge them for what it is. It's just, for me, I don't want to get off on someone thinking, oh, it's time to take my morning dump. Let me just do some part. Uh, ah. And then I just got to have like a whole orgasm face because someone shit on me. That shit is gross. 
like, yeah, I don't find that shit appealing at all. Which also is not that far down the list from another one we're going to be talking about of Aerotophnophilia. Please explain. The fetish of murder, often of strangers. The fuck is the matter with you? Apparently people get off on just like someone got murdered and just like, oh shit, someone got murdered. I'm turned down. What kind of shit is that? Let's, let's have sex because somebody just died five feet away. That kind of thing would have like a billion different red lights going off. I don't want to get it on with someone that's just like, Oh, I am so wet from this dead body on the floor. Oh, hell no. I'm getting out of here today. <laughs> Bye, bitch. <laughs> uh, uh, oh. Uh. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm not with the shit. No, 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 no. But then again, there are certain people that had that whole, it's the scent entitlement of death. I don't know what the fuck that's all about, but apparently that gets people off, and if that's your thing, that's your thing. If not, then, whew, thank, thank God. The next one we're going to be talking about is mysophilia, which is apparently the fetish of dirtiness, soiled, or decaying things. That's just wrong. So... Take the Futurama episode where Fry was trying to get it on with the new bureaucrat of Planet Express. She just got off on everything that he did filthy and dirty. If I can find a clip, it would go around here. <laughs> dirty boy, dirty, dirty, dirty. But regardless, that is mysophilia, where apparently you're turned on when someone has a filthy environment and you just have to get it on with them. It's just the opposite of someone with OCD that wants to clean. It's like saying, if you're this filthy, do you have ants on you? Do you have ants on you so I can hop on your dick? Can we do this today? Because I am ready to go. Oh, oh, is, is, that, is, that, a, is that a giant... Pus fill with mushrooms on your carpet? Is that is that is that grime on your dishes? Is that can you bend me over your dirty counter and plow me like a mule in a shit factory? Can can we do this? And scene. Get yeah, no no I I can't. I want someone to explain that one particularly to me because I can't stand a fully filthy house of any kind or like any dirty environment unless it's nature because you can't clean nature for obvious reasons. But why is that a thing? Why do people get off on anything filth related? I, I don't understand and I would love someone to explain it to me with that fetish because I don't get it. Now, this fetish actually has a little bit of history with people's imagination about a serial killer from centuries ago. Of picurism. What the fuck is that? The fetish of piercing the flesh of another person, often stabbing or cutting with a sharp object. What the fuck? What? What the fuck was that? What are you talking about? Certain people kind of equate this to the obvious person of legend of Jack the Ripper because every single time that you saw him murdering someone, it was a prostitute. But why a prostitute exactly? Because, according to certain people, that was his fetish. He got off on stabbing women and just jizzed in his pants. Roll the clip. I don't get it myself because it's like how do you get off on that whole stabbing thing like I actually have a real life knife like I've shown you guys plenty of times I'm not gonna go out in the streets and then just start stabbing people and just all of a sudden just try to ejaculate all over the place that, that'd be fucking weird if this is a real life fetish for people I employ anyone to just explain that shit to me because nothing about that sounds safe nothing about that sounds sane it just sounds deplorably disgusting and quite frankly very very wrong it 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 doesn't it doesn't grab me as something sexy 
And the next one we're talking about, we're actually going to have a small little clip of it shown from the show drawn together from Comedy Central. Symphorophilia. Oh my. Symphorophilia is the fetish of witnessing or staging disasters such as car crashes. So basically, you would have someone that would rewatch footage of, say, the Titanic sinking and a bunch of people dying while they're being plunged into the center of the sea as they're getting crushed by the pressure. And there would be a dude or a lady just masturbating to that ferociously. I have so many questions! Or there'd be a giant tornado disaster going on where it's sweeping the nation. Thousands are dying. Many people are going homeless. There are a lot of people depressed. But as the destruction is going on, some people are just like, you know what? I want to fuck while this is going on. I'm watching this. So drop your pants. Let's get it on. To the point where if I actually heard that from a partner, I would be kind of like, why and are you out of your fucking mind now i know this is a real life thing because i've seen people that get off on this in real life it is kind of crazy but it's still a strange fetish for myself because i don't see the logic in it i don't see the whole logic of just like millions of people are probably gonna die in this flood or this entire family died in this car crash I'm turned on by this. I don't see that being kind of smart. I don't even see that being a little bit smart. I see that as disgusting. Cause it's just fucking weird, man. I, I don't get it. What? I want someone of all these fetishes to explain this shit to me. Cause I'm honestly kind of perplexed on why people get turned on by this at every single turn. It's, ooh. The next to last one we're going to be talking about now is Vorephilia. I don't like where this is going. Vorephilia. How do I describe this? Okay, so Vorephilia is the fetish of you're fantasizing someone eating a creature or yourself whole in one foul swoop. Like that whole desire just to be eaten whole of like a creature your next door neighbor or yourself is apparently something where you get off on ferociously and it's it's kind of strange when i hear people saying that's a real life thing where they're fetishizing just like it's this giant woman trying to feed me in her stomach and oh my god i just just myself that's disturbing. I, I'm sitting in the room just like, Brian, why are you telling me this? And why is Brian here? If you guys don't get what I mean, I'm just saying I know over 50 Brians, and sometimes they're all in the same room. Shit ton of Brians. So, whenever I hear that thing, I'm just sitting there kind of confused, just like, so you get off on the fact that you would probably die as someone is just devouring you and you're just trying to ejaculate all over in their insides because they're eating you whole. How do you function? Something about that isn't right, and I can't figure it out, but I can't judge because of my own fetishes. But that's why we're going to get into the final fetish now that I cannot understand, but is kind of a red flag for... Men for mentality sake in a relationship. Zoo sadism. No! No! Oh god! The title alone should be self-explanatory, but zoo sadism is inflicting pain or seeing animals in agony or pain. I'm gagging and vomiting at the same time. I'm I'm go vomiting. Like you would honestly see someone sitting in the corner watching all of those ASPCA commercials just either diddling their skittle or going to town on themselves because they just see a bunch of animals in starvations 
or stuff or watching clips of animal crushing and get off on that you're sick and on a personal level i find that very sickening because i am pro animal life i'm an animal activist i don't want inhumane things to happen to animals that is just one of those things i don't cross especially since my ch my daughter effie loves horses loves her great dame loves animals in general i think i'm um, not only my own self but her sake about how deplorable that is just like if you're getting off on like someone crushing a hamster with their stiletto heel or someone cutting off their dog's leg you're sick and you have many different issues well shit. but at the same time in a relationship and you have a partner with these sort of fetishes if you're automatically just rolling with those matters, I gotta say that if you find someone that has that balance with you where you find love in that matter, sure, you can be in that relationship all you want, but if you're in a relationship and you see these sort of mentality things going on and you're not equipped with it and you're not with it, my advice is to get the fuck out of there and find someone with your own fetish stuff. Like for myself, I used to be in the huge amounts of BDSM and exhibitionism. You disgust me. Go on. But over time, like with like anything with age, I kind of just dialed back my fetish factor to where it's just on a nice steady pace where it's not over the top as it used to be, where I'm trying to find a partner that can deal with all of my craziness in and out of the bedroom because I want things to be more substantial. Did I find that person? Did I not find that person? That's no one's business but my own. But at the end of the day, it's all about trying to find the balance of where to draw the line in no matter what sort of field. If it's through fetishes, you find your line about where to stop, like how I found my way to stop by looking through all these fetishes to find out what isn't for me. There are a shit ton more I could go into, but I'm pretty sure by this point certain people have either vomited, clicked off in fear, or just decided to get away from it all after hearing the word fetish because you're either pure, innocent, or just don't know how to really accept these facts. But I don't know. At the end of the day, I can't control how you guys do anything in or out the bedroom. It's your life to live. I'm just here to give you guys small little factoids about the ins and outs each and every year about what is or what isn't sort of stuff and what I don't understand. If you guys are cool with all these different fetishes, fine. Go in the comments and tell me for yourself why these fetishes are for yourself. If you're not with them, go in the comments and just say why you don't like them, but just be respectful. Because certain people apparently get off on this stuff. I don't know why, I'll never know why, but I will respect anyone else's decision to have this as their fetish. And now, how am I going to end this for you guys? Um, oh right, Brian, eat a giant bag of elephant Is hidden deep in his phrases, pages and pages at to top, and this paragraphs of its own creations. Who'd have guessed it? The scientist became the specimen, venomous.